Hey guys, welcome back to Tin Shed TV, and in this episode, we're gonna bog a hole with what's in the box. Hey guys, we're back. We have um, some parts have finally arrived, so. Ugh. Thanks to our good pals down at Basspec, the great Southern Bars. We actually have our air, air plate all machined flat with a little bit of damage from Australia Post, but they'll buff out. Should be alright. So that's all back, that's ready to go on. It had about three millimeters worth of material cut out. And as well, making sure that everything have all the good stuff. Brand new factory tensioner um, for the moment until I finalize my super tensioner design. And I also noticed when we were taking the motor apart that the, the serpentine tensioner was very stiff. So, brand new one of those as well, which straight away I'm going to have to cut off and make it fit, so we'll get on to that. So that's it all done there, as you can see, all nice and flat again. There was a lot of material taken off. It did have a massive, massive bow in it, so... That's all being fixed. Apparently, oh, free rice packaging. So apparently it was just as bent as a banana, according to Barry. Would have been from when all that welding went into there. I don't think the jig really helped it stay flat. But one of the other things I got Barry to do, sorry, is rice everywhere in this thing is um, weld the uh, the two o-rings shut so you can get that done for you at badge spec and then he's obviously flattened the whole thing so I don't have to worry about o-rings anymore which is awesome so once I get all these rice packaging out of the coolant hull I think that's all of it now um, We'll, but we'll clean up the uh, the head surface uh, because we got some brand new metal lin gaskets. So, so with those they're going to seal the lower intake manifold and stop any oil getting in, which is awesome. So we'll put those in very shortly. So before we start, I got to make sure I rip all these old gaskets off, clean up the um, the head surface because there's a lot of oil residue and old sealant there and then we'll put the new thing back on. Got sure no over now. Wasting it, wasting the uh, the difference in the gaskets. Oh, I reckon you're due for a new set. So, mm. but the the ports are a little bit bigger on the new ones, which is it's not a problem. So the new mace gaskets are obviously the ones they make themselves. Yeah. Which is bigger than the genuine ones in terms of the port size, probably to match their ported heads. Well, look at the size of that one. Look mm. how much difference there is in that one. But the uh, the we also noticed if you look at it. The thickness. Yeah, they're much much thinner gasket. Don't know how that's going to go. Uh, Does it mean it gives us more clamping force, or like? Don't know. If you look at the thickness of the actual plate here, and then you've just got this small O-ring, whereas smaller, thinner plate, but much thicker. Thicker O-ring. Uh, much thicker ceiling. Yeah. So much gets compressed better. Uh -huh. You can only try. Give it a go. See what happens. But they they look the goods. These have been in there. 
for a while. When was the last time you replaced limb gaskets? Five years ago. Yeah. So I would I would say you're due for a new set. <laughs> the amount of times it's come on and off. Not that these have failed. It's just let's put a new set on. The Goo Master is at work. Hey. Come on. Come on. Honey. Not that bad anymore. Uh, yeah, I, just okay. don't, I just don't I just don't trust paper anymore. Just don't trust paper. Why aren't you putting a thermostat in there, Ev? That's that's thermostat housing. Where's your thermostat? Don't need one. Why not? Because I have an electric uh, water pump. So the Heltec controls the pulse on it, so we can slow it down, speed it up when we need it. Oh. Turn it off when we don't need it, because we don't need it. So we don't need a, a, a manual-based thermostat that opens and shuts. No, which means the best thing about it is, if it's we're sitting in the pits of the drags and we want to get the engine down to temp, like down to a good, good temp, the thermostat shuts. Well, the thermostat would be open until about 70. Or you could try to, which I don't know. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a dip. It's a double-edged sword because you don't want it to go too cold, yet you don't want it to be too hot. So the thermostat would shut it, which stop it from getting any any colder. So I don't know. Discussions in the comments. But but the idea is in theories with electric water pump and the Haltech, we can control the coolant system. You can control the flow. The thermostat's a restriction, so, yeah. All right. Okay. I don't know. One thermostat housing, and then a nice shiny limb. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Um, you haven't seen this limb yet, have you? No, I haven't. What else got changed on this limb? I, I can tell what's been changed. Oh, O-ring holes gone. Yeah, there's no O-ring holes for those players at home. That's where you would normally put those two um, orange O-rings and a bit of goo. No need to if the holes aren't there anymore. You're finishing cleaning that up there, Shawnee? Yeah. Let's get the old goo off. Something else is missing for your motor. Is there supposed to be something in there? Balance shaft, yeah. Deleted. Yeah. Deleted. Why'd you get rid of a balance shaft? Don't need it? Don't need it. It makes the car go faster. <laughs> <laughs> the engine's more balanced without a balance shaft. <laughs> What have we got going in here? So with your limb gaskets, make sure you put a blob on each side underneath, and then when the limb goes on, we'll put a blob on the top side as well. But you always put a blob in the corners, just to fill the bottom bits. And now, Pablo Picasso, what are we doing? You don't have to, but I, I like giving a little bit of copper spray just to seal the, the rubber for the very first bit. Just adds that little bit extra. Doesn't hurt the seal, but just it's a peace of mind for myself. Fair enough. You can see the difference in that um, port size in a second. So through that, in that hole, and that hole. See, much difference. But we can put we can put those heads out much much bigger if we wanted to. Yeah. So that copper that copper spray just sort of helps it stick to the uh, the head. Just hold it there for yeah, you. Yeah, sticks to the initial bind, yeah. and then obviously once it heats up, so we don't have to. That's how I've always done it. It just kind of helps hold it in place, so when you try and put this limb in, you don't sort of knock it out of position. But um, yeah, those ports are definitely a bit, a bit more open on the gasket. All right, number two. All right, so where have we got to put this extra goon now? In these corners. In these corners, right, right there. Yeah. And don't, don't go crazy with it. Yes, all but you got to make sure you do get a good. Got a little squeeze in there. And what's our goo of choice, Ev? 
Ah, JB Weld Ultra Grey. Just good old RTV Ultra Grey. All right, limb. Yeah. Then, if you can, with all your limb bolts, if you've got some thread sealant, just a little bit because some of these bolts, especially this back one, they go into water passages. So, if you can throw some thread sealant on it just to make sure it doesn't leak, Bob is your mother's brother. Bob's your mother's brother. That would make Bob's your uncle. Something like that. Yeah, there you go. So a bit of bit of goo in the gasket, a bit of goo in the corners, and a t different type of goo, but a bit of goo on your on your bolts. Goo everywhere. You sound, you sound, you sound like me. Well, you already lost some ponies. How many ponies did you think you lost? Um... On uh, on the. Uh, the, the let's say the, the paddock gate was left open on this limb previously and the intercooler plate. How many ponies do you think you lost? I I would think I would have seen over thirty pound. Yeah. It it was it was a pretty decent leak, wasn't it? Oh well. It wasn't registering much on the on the actual gauge itself. Like yeah. that's how bad it was. Yeah. The fact that like you push the, you turn the compressor on, the compressor gate opens, and it wasn't really registering on the actual regulator itself. It means like there wasn't much to stop it from going out. No, it wasn't pushing against anything. No, so so even with that much of an air leak between these surfaces, we were still seeing what twenty five pound plus. Twenty four. Yeah. On the dyno, so this this could be quite impressive if it's got no air leaks. So, all right, we'll um, bolt all them up. All right. So, is that a ten mil or a three eighths for the players at home, Ev? Three eighths. So, it's a three eighths. So, just I'm just nipping these up to begin with, but always start from the inside. Crossways. And work your way out. Just like so. How many are there in total? Just to make sure we didn't miss any. One, two, three, four, eight, twelve. Twelve in total. Twelve One, two, three, little four, bolts holding down that limb. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. All right, torque wrench time. scared because it's in the head and I'm like I don't want to go any further than I really have to <laughs> is that why you use a torque wrench though yeah no it's supposed to truck, but sometimes truck the it jumps, sometimes it's just like it just never reaches the end and you're like I'm stopping right now because <laughs> and like I just feel like it's never gonna click and I'm just gonna snap a bolt <laughs> Especially when you've reused the same bolts before. Because uh, you're saying that the threads might be a little bit stretched. I think the bolts already yielded, but yeah. Last thing I don't want to do is snap a bolt off in a head. It's what an easy out's for, isn't it? <laughs> that right now. <laughs> you know that meme where you say it's only going to take ten minutes for a ten-minute job. Next minute. Next minute. <laughs> Five days later. Ah, see? That's what you want. Nice, nice clicks. Buys brand new tensioner unit. 
sends it in with a saber saw. Who <laughs> needs a warranty? <laughs> No warranty with custom parts. So you've obviously put tape around it just so no schmutz gets in there and binds up the actual tensioner spring. Uh, hopefully, that's the idea. And then see how straight I can cut it. Got him! Good. At least we're gonna file that down with a flappy disc. Mm -hmm. Nice, Gary. How's it look, Shauna? That's right. Now, the good thing is they give us free spare O-rings to uh, put that uh, 90 degree bit back in that everyone seems to break. Yeah, everyone. Taking some time out from fixing cars because my stupid dog decided to chew through the lead and went pop and we thought something glass broke but yeah, but priority Sean. Yeah, you can't have the beer fridge get hot. <laughs> <laughs> we can get back to the car later. But we don't, go, don't want to go back to the car and then come back to hot drinks. Mm. Oh, we're just putting the new tensioner back in, putting it, the front end back together. Um, new shiny bits limb, new, new shiny, shiny bits bit, tensioner. That's the shiny bit in this engine at the moment. Ooh. Got to keep them ponies in somehow. You've got shiny rocker cover gaskets and shiny fuel lines. Got bling in your engine. Bling. How's your engine bay going? Same shit, different day. And fuel rail. Fuel rail. It's a pain in the butt when you run a big blower and you have to take your blower off to get your fuel rails, isn't it? Yeah. Like you got to take all of your induction off just to change an O-ring on a fuel on a fuel injector for shit itself. <laughs> oh well, the shit we do. Oh shit, the shit you do. Shit we can get my we can get to my injectors without pulling my blower off. Oh, where are my little tings? Little oh. tings, like these little tings. Yeah, there we go. Boo. Put some fuel ejectors in. Yeah, you gotta clean it. This is, you can see before the, uh, what an intake gasket failure does, clogs up the injector. Oh no. Tips, and then obviously, bad fuel line atomization equals poor fuel run, so. E yeah. Equals, equals cranky tuner. Oh, sorry, it'd be cranky if it doesn't go his way, yeah. <laughs> we love you, Baz. <laughs> But bad injectors will make anyone's tuner cranky, won't it? Yeah, because you're chase. They're constantly chasing the the fault, and it costs lots of money and lots of time to pay a tuner to chase a fault. Correct. So if you can see a problem, fix it before you take it to the dyno. Which this will be going to a dyno shortly. Back to the dyno. Back to get the get the result we wanted in the first place. What was the goal? Um, well, first things first, the original goal was to beat the Whipple. So we're, we're anything to, after that's just a win. So we're, we're very close to that. And oh yeah, the well, Whipple, it's already making more talk than the Whipple. Yeah, and the Whipple was already at its top end and we haven't even actually started Playing with this blower, have we? Like no. it, it was a very we had a hole in the fucking engine. That's what we had. Yeah, we were we were leaking some ponies, mm. and you were still making more boost in the Whipple at a lower RPM. Yeah, and we hadn't pulled any timing out of the engine yet. No. So yeah, it's definitely some potential. Definitely some potential. If we can pull out as much timing as we did with the Whipple, <laughs> and it's still happy to play the game. 
until Uncle Uncle Rodney comes knocking. Please don't say that. Uncle Rodney or, or Uncle Frank. The goo man is at it again. At least this time it'll seal. Well, I hope so. Should be it game. sealed last time, just not completely. It's not completely. <laughs> I think that's kind of what's required for it to work. Yeah. Oh, now is the nozzle all gooed up. Oh, I just didn't put a big enough hole in it. all about the flow, the bigger the hole. All about the flow. So you were saying that that limb's also been opened up width-wise as well? Yeah, Barry. Barry's helped me out with that as well. Just a little bit wider. This overseeing matches the port from the... Um, from the air-to-air -air plate? And the air-to-air -air plate, yeah. That's all we have to do now. No more worrying about O-rings and shape uh, o-rings aren't required because there's no holes up there anymore mm. all right cool so we're ready for the air to air plate ready for the air to air plate Ooh. air to air plate going in click well, that feels a lot flatter <laughs> there's like 100 percent suction straight away yeah I'm going to say that goo uh, is sticking, the fact that you're shaking the whole car and that plate's not moving. <clears throat> Didn't fit properly. Because we still got to cut a bit more off this tensioner. But as you can see, it's touched everything. So I'm just going to snap that way. Shauno holds that and doesn't go anywhere. There we go, that'll work better. All right, drop it down, Shauno. Boom. Nice. Fits where it touches. Just. Just. Okay, it's good. Yeah, well, you know, like, when you put two pieces of metal between, like, an oil and something like that, and it slides around like glass? That's what's happening now. Nice. New bolts? No. Same old bolts, except I just uh, took a mill off the top of it, so... Because the issue was... We go put them back in, ah. and they're going to be too tall. So, because we've taken down a bit of material, so now they should be flush under ho oh, oh, bees dick. And I haven't started tying that yet, and it's just on it. Alright, so they should all be pretty sweet then. Hopefully. Should just sit just under the surface. Alright, I got the front. Oh no, I knew this was gonna. I knew this was something that was gonna have an issue. What? Because. The plate's thinner now, so the charge has come down lower again. How much did he take off the plate? It was for about 3 mil. So these pulleys, this pulley... It's got to get down. It's got to get machined down. <laughs> uh, or lowered on the bracket. Pretty lowered enough in this fucking bracket. Um, yeah, well, you're going to be sitting on the water. You are sitting on the water pipe. Yeah, I'm sitting on the water pipe down there. That bracket needs rebuilding. <laughs> So this, so this is what happens when you play for Game of Millimeters. Because we've lowered the, the, the air to air plate, it's thinner, therefore the charger sits lower. And now, it's in that freaking pulley again. Hmm. So the options are, you machine, gonna, uh, I can machine the edge of the pulley a little bit lower. I don't think you're going to get enough out of it. I really don't. We're gonna to have to make a new bracket and lower that whole pulley because we've adjusted that bracket previously and we've now run out of. Now we're smashing against the actual water pipe now. Yeah, yeah. So we can't go down any lower. So you're gonna to have to make a new plate and mount the mount the actual pulley lower. 
Just the yep. front side of the pulley too, not the rear side. Yeah. Look at it. So close. Hmm. Oh well. We'll be back tomorrow. So Sean, this is a good opportunity to uh, hit that subscribe button. Yeah, it is. If you mm. want to find out how we're going to make this work, you better subscribe to the notifications on so you can see the next video mm. and uh, see what we come up with next. Next video or just next se section? Um, Maybe after the ad break. After the ad break. Right, so machine down this pulley here and we have just got it to clear but it's very 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 tight still so I don't think I can take that any further down um, so I might have to change the actual mounting location a little bit just to give you an extra millimeter that's not touching and the belt won't even touch either because it sits further back so for the sakes of it and waiting around trying to fix all this at the moment I'm going to Take that off, put the belt on, put it back on, and just see if it starts and we can come back and fix that or not. gonna be tight but she clears just <laughs> new uh, fleet runner belt because I've gone back up to the 75 and that fits the 75 nice on the standard um, standard placement so we'll give she's ready to crack open see if she starts I'm uh, pissing out feel somewhere oh I didn't do this one up 100%. Fuck my life. <sighs> well, it's gonna take a while to clean this up. Attempt number two. No leaks, we're all good. Remember, this is not the uh, the new pulley yet, so might be still having issues. thing is I don't hear a whisper anymore it's actually struggling so I think Barry's got to come back and do some um, uh, some throttle body tuning because now the uh, now the throttle is not the hole is filled and now the throttle doesn't want to actually work anymore the master is here Well that's now idling so much nicer and we haven't even, even started tickling with it yet. Just a few more pluses, didn't you have to put in Barry? Yeah, about 80 pluses. 80 pluses? Well we're starting to idle now. So Barry's going to do tick up ch tickle tuning and then Dino! Phase 2? Hopefully it works out.
Not a healthy uh, fuel pump there. <laughs> Maybe it's just air. Whoa, so much now nicer. All you gotta do is dyno it. Please subscribe. Oh. TV. And you'll see it making some power finally. Hopefully, with no air leaks. Yeah. Off. Me, my bricky. Having my bicky and my tea. Most of our viewers probably don't even know what tea is. I'll put a poll out there. Who rubbers energy drinks and coffee over tea? Because he's good. Anyway, before you go. Oh, you're not wearing your shirt. No, I'm not. Okay, well, I'll edit that out. <laughs> just edit it in, just be like, bah. Well, I'm wearing mine, though. See? Magnaro. Good. Maybe I want to keep my shirt so then I don't get all grubby from working in the shed. <laughs> And that way I can wear them to shows and people know who I am. What I don't understand though, on Marty Car Mods, Marty always wears a white shirt in the shed, in the garage. Just... Well, it's like painters, they always wear, painters traditionally wear white. It's just that like they can throw some paint on there and it looks like they've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> you look at someone with a black shirt on, they never really look like they've been busy. Mm. Whereas white shirt, you can clearly see all the shit. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box today?